Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. Today I have with me two excellent stage pianos. I have got a Kurzweil Artis SE. That's brand new from Kurzweil. It's the scaled down version of their original Artis keyboard. And I have the Casio Privia PX5S. Now the reason I put these two together is because these are both excellent boards pretty much in the same kind of price range now this with a list price of almost two thousand dollars and a street price of about fifteen hundred dollars this makes it pretty good choice for that price range and if you go over here with a list price of about thirteen hundred dollars on this Privia PX5S and a street price of about a thousand dollars now you've got $1,500 here for the Artis SE and $1,000 for the Privia PX5S. So this is about one and a half times the price of this. Let's explore what, the, what you get with each one of these for what you're paying. Okay, now when you go and see a band playing, whether it's a huge big band or some local band or whatever, you're going to see a few names pop up with keyboards. You're going to see Yamaha and Korg and Roland and Kurzweil. Casio is starting to pop up more and more, but they're a latecomer into the game. They just started going pro a few years ago, and they are doing a phenomenal job with it. But right now, let's compare these two. All right, so let's start out with Polyphony. With the Kurzweil Artis SE, you get 128 note Polyphony. And with the PX5S, you get 256 note Polyphony. So double that. The case on the Artis SE, that's metal. You've got plastic side panels but everything else is metal, right from the very case to this protective key cover over here. Everything on the Privia PX5S is plastic. Now, what that means is because metal and plastic, it's gonna make a difference in the weight. Now with the Artis SE, you've got about 38 pounds, which is pretty excellent considering some of the other keyboards that are out there today that weigh just under 50 pounds or right around there. And then you have the Casio Privia PX5S that weighs just 24 pounds. And you can't get 24 pounds without having it all plastic. So almost one and a half times the weight here, but it is built like a tank. It is solid. With the Privia, 24 pounds that is what that's an argument right there in its favor because 24 pounds i don't know about you but 24 pounds is easy to carry i can carry that under one arm and as far as the lengths of each of these they're well, let's take a, a tape measure over here and because the pitch bend and the modulation wheel on each one of these is up on top above the keys on the left side rather than to the left of the keyboard like some of these other models it makes the units of each one of these shorter so that each one of these can fit into the back seat of your car and it will fit in the back seat of most cars today now if these pitch bend and modulation wheels were to the left of the keyboard nah that's not going to work you're going to have to fold down the passenger seat and put the keyboard in diagonally from behind the driver's seat to in front of the passenger the passenger's front side all right so let's measure how long how long each one of these are this is just about 51 inches and this is actually a little over 52 inches so you got 51 inches and a little bit over 52 inches on the Privia. And the reason I can see it right now, on each side of the keyboard, you've got 
Now, over here, it's about an inch and a half. And over here, almost two inches of plastic on either side of the keys here, and about an inch and a half of plastic on either side of the keys on the Artis SE. Okay, now, aside from all that stuff, let's talk about the actual keys, the key action over here. This is a Fatar TP100 action, and it has the standard dual sensor keys. It's a smooth plastic surface, just like you'll find on a lot of modern day real acoustic pianos. But you come over to the Casio over here, and they have their own proprietary, they build their own keyboard keys and their own action here. And what they have is triple sensor technology. So rather than the standard 128 MIDI velocity levels that this has, you've got high definition over here with 16K velocity levels, which not everything uses, but if you want to use this as a controller to something like piano tech, that's where this would come in. But these are textured keys, textured ebony and ivory. So they'll kind of absorb sweat when you're playing live, that kind of thing. All right. And let's come back over here. Boot time on each one of these is about 10 seconds. So that's almost identical. And that's a good thing because if something happens on the stage, you don't want to wait two minutes for this thing to reboot. So 10 seconds, that is tolerable. That's, that's great. Now the LCDs on each one of these, these displays, they're both small. The Kurzweil has a wider LCD and it has two lines of text to it. The Casio Privia has a little bit more than that. It's a little taller, not as wide. So let's, let's measure that too. Just the LCD, not the surrounding thing that makes you think that it's bigger. Three inches long here. About two and a half inches long here. Three quarters of an inch high. One and a quarter inch high. So one is longer, the other is taller. Matter of preference, actually. So that's not a bad thing. Now, as far as splits and layers and transposing, there, you can do that very easily with the Kurzweil Artis SE. Very easy. When it comes down to doing the same thing with the Casio, you have to go through menus. So it's a little bit more keystrokes or a little bit more work to do that. But you can do that with either one of these. Simple or just a little bit more key presses over here. Okay. As far as the pianos go, this has what they're calling a German nine foot concert grand. And as far as the Casio, their concert grand, which they're not revealing, they never reveal what real acoustic concert grand it's been sampled from and what sampling technique or whatever it was. So when you hear German concert grand, it's usually a Steinway, it's usually a Steinway D, or at least that's what it is. We think that's what it is with the Kurzweil Artis SE. And I'm sure it's a Steinway with the, with the Casio as well. I don't know which model. They're not talking. They both sound good. So. See what I mean? They're both good. You, you can get away with either one of these. 
they're both a good choice as far as piano goes. And as far as the reverb, I've said both of these, the last slider on each one of these is reverb by default, usually, especially for the pianos. And I've set it for 50% on each one of these. To be fair, I'm not tweaking either of these. You're hearing exactly what you get from each of these. So. Nice. Okay, now as far as the pedals go, each one of these uses a switched pedal for sustain or damper. Neither of these support a half pedal or a half pedaling, which is a shame, but that's okay. When you're using these for a stage piano, you don't really need that. However, the Kurzweil will take a half damper pedal such as the Korg DS1H and it will pass that along via MIDI to a virtual piano that you might be running on your computer so if you're using this as a controller that's where that comes in but that half pedal will not affect any of the built-in pianos here it treats it just like it's an on-off switch and the same thing with the Privia PX5S for internal pianos but if you put a half damper pedal on here it won't make any difference it doesn't even pass it through so that's another difference over here and as far as the inputs here you've got two switched pedal inputs same thing as here but you also have an expression or continuous controller pedal input here for like volume or expression pedals you don't have that on the Casio Privia PX5S. And I think of all the things that you could have left out, that was the one major flaw with the PX5S. Otherwise, there was this if they had included that, oh, I think a lot more people would be interested because we don't use these just as pianos. You know, a gigging keyboardist uses a lot more things like organs and electric pianos and strings and violins and, and horns and all kinds of things. So, yeah, they kind of missed the boat on that one. As far as MIDI, MIDI in, MIDI out, your standard five pin DIN MIDI cables on each of these. And they also have USB over MIDI on each of these. So that's not a problem here. They're both matched as far as that go. The, the power supply, this one uses an external 15 volt DC power supply. Now what I mean by external, they use what I call a brick here. One end of the brick goes to an AC power outlet. The other one, 15 volts DC, one and a half, two and a half apps actually, goes into the power supply input, DC input. And I like it when it's a brick like that and I'll explain why in a minute. Now, the Casio Privia PX5S also has a brick. So you've got 12 volts going in for the DC input as opposed to 15 on this one, uh, one amp. But the Casio Privia can also run on eight AA Panlite batteries, which is a cool thing because you don't need to have AC power to play with this. Anywhere in the world, you can plug in your eight pen light batteries and you can play. Of course, you need some kind of a, a speaker or PA or a keyboard amp that also runs on batteries so that you can be heard. Roland KC-110 is a great choice for that or any of these more powerful amps that run on lead acid batteries. Now, because the Kurzweil also has a brick you can get something like an external power battery pack. And, and I'm researching that right now. And as soon as I find out, I will make another video. But 
I'm pretty sure I can find an external battery pack where I can eliminate the need for an AC outlet altogether and plug that in to the power DC input over here and again make this so that it can play anywhere in the world as well. Of course you need that PA or keyboard amp that also runs on batteries. So that's a good thing right there. Now this has four sliders and this has six sliders and these four when you're in multi mode double is eight because you got a switch here which you press the switch and when in multi mode this controls the effects or filters and when you press that off in multi mode this becomes the four volume controls for each one of the instruments in your layer of up to four instruments. Now, Kurzweil calls these layers multi, where you can set up a patch where you've got up to four different voices. And the nice thing is you can control the volume of each voice. You can turn each voice on and off. Now you can do the same thing with the Privia PX5S up to four voices. But as far as controlling the volume, you can do that, but you're going to have to do some programming. And it's not global programming. You're going to have to do some programming for each one of the layers that you set up. And as far as turning them on or off, yes, you can do that too. But not, not like this, where you have a dedicated switch for each one of those four zones where you can just turn it on or off. You have to go through a couple of extra keystrokes to get to whichever zone you're at so that you can turn it on or off. Now, when you're at a live gig performing, that is where this really comes in handy on the artist. You can turn any one of those zones on or off. You can adjust the volume on the fly. You can press another button and, uh, and adjust the effects on the fly. You can do all that here too, but it's extra work, extra keystrokes to get to the individual pieces of those four zones. Okay, but you can do it. All right, so that's kind of one of the reasons this is a little bit more money than that. All right, now you can get a, a music rest for this where you can put your music on, sheet music or your phablet or tablet or whatever. It's optional. This one doesn't offer that at all. So you don't have that possibility here. But what you do have here is the ability to record yourself. When you're playing something, you can just put in a USB thumb drive into this USB slot and you can set it up to record whatever you're playing. Not only that, it has a pair of quarter inch line inputs. So whatever is coming in through those line inputs that you're playing around along with can also be recorded this doesn't have that it does have a mini plug of stereo 1 8 inch jack so that if you plug in your mp3 player or whatever you can jam along with it but there is no recording capability here okay sequencing neither of these do sequencing this has been labeled as having a phrase sequencer, which is not a sequencer at all. Not in the sense that you're thinking of. It's not a workstation. It's not a DAW. What they mean by a phrase sequencer, you can trigger a phrase here. Let's say you've pre-recorded something, drums or bass or whatever, and you make that a phrase. And if you want that to play, you assign it to a certain key. You hit that key, and as long as you're holding that key, that phrase will play. This doesn't have any of that capability. And as far as being a synthesizer, where you can mess with the individual waveforms to create your own sounds, if you're a sound designer, that's where the Casio Privia PX5S shines. You can do that. You can't do that with the artist. This is strictly a stage piano for performance, whereas 
with the Casio, it kind of wears many hats. You can do a lot of things with this. And as far as the outputs go, the left and right quarter inch outs here are balanced. So you can use balanced cables, tip ring sleeve, or you can use the standard tip sleeve cables. On the Privia PX5S, it's non-balanced, it just takes TS cables. Yeah, you can use TRS cables, but it won't make any difference. It's still unbalanced. What that means in terms of running balanced versus unbalanced means you can run longer runs here and without having to worry about losing signal quality or having things like radio signals interfere with the connection between this and your mixer or front of house or amp or whatever. Okay, so that's pretty much it between these two. Now, if I were, well, actually, I am a gigging pianist, but for me, it's pretty much piano. I almost don't use any of the other voices in either of these. So for me, what it comes down to is which one that I prefer for. Now, as a pianist, I will take this because... I'm just using piano. I like the action on this and it sounds good. And it's 24 pounds. I really love that. And I can do the same thing here. But if I'm going to use something other than piano, and usually a keyboardist by definition means you're playing a keyboard that can control a bunch of different sounds, whether it's a key, uh, whether it's a piano or an organ or a flute or a synth, or a pad, or a drum, or anything else, I would probably opt for this one, because especially with organs, I like the organ sounds on this one so much better, and Kurzweil's motto has always been, it's the sound. And it always has been, it's the sound. The sound here is phenomenal on all of their instruments. So aside from piano, I think I'd have to give an edge to Kurzweil for the other sounds. But as far as the Casio goes, you can use this for any gig you can dream of. Maybe the quality of the organs aren't as good as this, but really everything here, for the money, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Now, when I'm standing up, when I'm standing up and I'm an arm's length away from each of these the wording that's on here white on a black background this is really easy to read i don't have to strain or struggle at all and over here while i can while i can still read everything it is smaller and is black on a white background so when you're in a dark gig it's easier to read these than that now, as far as the sliders go, I've got I've got an inch of play going up and down with the sliders on this. And as far as the Kurzweil goes, a little bit over two inches. So I can fine control this a little bit better with that. As far as the tone controls, the four knobs that are on here, default to tone, you've got bass, mid-low, mid-high, and high. The tone controls here are called Master EQ. You've got low, mid, and high. But the nice thing about this is I've got an on-off switch. So if I want to turn off EQ altogether, I can do that with the press of a button. I can't do that here, at least not easily. And as far as the pitch bend and modulation wheels go, these have like a rubber feeling to them. They're big, they're huge. These are plastic, but they're ridged. And they have ridges in them. So you're not gonna slip or anything like that. A little smaller. So as far as gigging, if I'm just doing piano, and for me, I'm just a pianist, mainly, 
I would take either one of these, doesn't matter which. I would probably opt for this one because of the lightweight and the battery operation. As far as everything else, if I, asked, if I have to use something more than piano, I'd opt for the Kurzweil. So, that's my take on each one of these. And it's up to you which one you like better. Either one is good. And as far as the weights, 24 pounds, 38 pounds, you know, it's great because you've got other pianos or digital pianos that have come out right about a year before or about the same time. You got the Roland RD800, you got the Kawai MP7, and you've got the Yamaha CP4 and all that stuff. And some of these weigh right around 50 pounds. The Nord Stage 2 is like around 41 pounds. So these are both lighter than most of those. And it's a matter of preference, but I really like them both. And as far as this TP100 Action goes, they've got some velocity settings on here so that you can control your velocity settings. They've got a piano setting, which I don't like. The medium setting, which seems to be the setting right out of the box, seems to be the best for me. They have light, lighter, lightest. They have hard, harder, hardest. So you got a bunch of velocity settings. One of those is bound to be good for you. The Casio, it's got a really great keyboard action to it. If you're a pianist, you're going to like this. So anyway, some things to think about. Piano Man Chuck, peace out, thanks for watching.